Good day, folks. In today's video, we're going to be asking the question, did Brexiteers' promises of lower prices come true? As we all know, one of the main arguments put forth by proponents of Brexit was that leaving the European Union would lead to lower prices for goods and services in the UK. But as the dust settles on the UK's exit from the EU, it's time to take a closer look at whether or not these promises have come to fruition. So did Brexiteers deliver on their promise of lower prices? Or have prices actually gone up since the UK left the EU? Stay tuned as we delve into the data and try to get to the bottom of this important question. After years of negotiations and uncertainty, the Brexit deal was finally signed in 2021. The UK officially left the European Union on January 31st, and the transition period ended on December 31st of the same year. During this transition period, the UK and EU worked to establish their new relationship, including agreements on trade, immigration, and other key issues. One of the major promises made by Brexiteers during the campaign was that leaving the EU would lead to lower prices for goods and services in the UK. Proponents of Brexit argue that being free from EU regulations and trade tariffs would make it easier for UK businesses to compete and ultimately lead to lower prices for consumers. But as the transition period comes to a close, it's worth taking a look at whether or not these promises have come true. Have prices actually gone down since the UK left the EU? Or have they remained the same or even gone up? As the dust settles on the UK's exit from the EU, it's clear that both Remainers and Brexiters have been unhappy with the outcome. Remainers have expressed disappointment that the UK has left the EU at all, citing concerns about the economic and political implications of the decision. They'd argue that the UK has given up its place at the table in the world's largest trading bloc, and that the country will suffer as a result. On the other hand, Brexiters have also expressed frustration with the outcome of the process. Many feel that the deal struck with the EU does not go far enough in giving the UK the independence and autonomy that they were promised. They argue that the UK has not gained the full benefits of leaving the EU, and that the country is still tied to many of the bloc's regulations and rules. As the UK navigates its new relationship with the EU, it's becoming increasingly clear that prices for certain goods and services have risen in the country. One area where this is particularly evident is in the cost of food. The UK imports a significant amount of its food from the EU, and the decline in the value of the pound following the Brexit vote has made these imports more expensive. In addition, Brexit-related trade disruptions and new tariffs have also contributed to the rising cost of food in the UK. Energy prices have also gone up in the UK since the Brexit vote. Again, the decline in the value of the pound has played a role in this, as many energy companies import materials and equipment from the EU. In addition, the UK's departure from the EU's internal energy market has also contributed to rising energy prices. Finally, taxes have also risen in the UK since the Brexit vote. The government has implemented a range of tax increases, including increases in VAT and fuel duty, in order to help fund public services and reduce the budget deficit. Overall, it seems that prices for a range of goods and services in the UK are set to continue rising in 2023 and beyond as the country grapples with the economic and political consequences of the Brexit decision. When the UK voted to leave the EU in 2016, Brexiteers predicted that the decision would lead to lower prices across the board. They argued that being free from EU regulations and trade tariffs would make it easier for UK businesses to compete and ultimately lead to lower prices for consumers. However, as the UK navigates its new relationship with the EU, it's becoming increasingly clear that this prediction has not come true. In fact, prices for certain goods and services have actually gone up in the UK since the Brexit vote. One area where this is particularly evident is in the cost of food. The UK imports a significant amount of its food from the EU, and the decline in the value of the pound following the Brexit vote has made these imports more expensive. In addition, Brexit-related trade disruptions and new tariffs have also contributed to the rising cost of food in the UK. One of the key factors contributing to the increase in food prices in the UK is the global energy crisis. As energy costs have gone up around the world, it has become more expensive to produce, transport, and store food. This has led to higher prices for consumers in the UK and around the world. It's important to note that the increase in energy prices in the UK 
is not solely a result of Brexit. In fact, energy prices have risen globally in recent years due to a range of factors. One key factor is the global energy crisis. As demand for energy has increased around the world, the price of energy has gone up. This has been driven by a variety of factors, including population growth, economic development, and the increasing use of energy-intensive technologies. In addition to the global energy crisis, other factors have also contributed to the increase in energy prices. These include the rising cost of oil, natural gas, and other fossil fuels, as well as the increasing use of renewable energy sources, which can be more expensive to produce and distribute. So, while it's true that energy prices have gone up in the UK since the Brexit vote, it's important to recognize that this is not solely a result of the decision to leave the EU. Rather, it's part of a larger global trend driven by a range of economic and technological factors. Since the UK's exit from the EU, the country has sought to establish new trade deals with countries around the world, including New Zealand and Australia. These deals are meant to help the UK diversify its trading partners and reduce its reliance on the EU. However, it's important to note that these new trade deals have not had a significant impact on food prices in the UK. While it's true that the UK imports some food from these countries, the vast majority of the country's food is still imported from the EU. One of the main promises made by Brexiteers during the campaign to leave the EU was that Brexit would lead to cost-cutting free trade deals with countries around the world. Proponents of Brexit argue that being free from EU regulations and trade tariffs would make it easier for UK businesses to compete and ultimately lead to lower prices for consumers. However, as the UK navigates its new relationship with the EU and seeks to establish new trade deals with countries around the world, it's becoming increasingly clear that this promise has proven to be politically impossible. In fact, the UK has struggled to strike new trade deals that are as favorable as the ones it had as a member of the EU. Many countries have been unwilling to offer the UK the same level of access to their markets that they offer to the EU, and the UK has had to make concessions in order to secure these deals. While it's true that sky-high energy prices are not solely a result of Brexit, it's also important to recognize that Brexit has disrupted energy trading with Europe and contributed to the increase in energy prices in the UK. The UK was previously part of the EU's energy market, which allowed for the free flow of energy across EU member states. However, the UK's exit from the EU has disrupted this flow of energy and led to the introduction of new tariffs and trade barriers. One area where the UK has faced criticism is in its vaccine rollout. The country has lagged behind many other countries in terms of the number of vaccines it has administered, and this has raised concerns about the UK's ability to protect its population from COVID-19. It's important to note that the UK's vaccine rollout has been slower than other countries for a range of reasons, and it is not clear if this is directly related to Brexit. One factor that may have contributed to the slower rollout is the UK's reliance on a single vaccine supplier which has led to delays in the supply of vaccines. In addition, the UK has also faced logistical challenges in terms of organizing and administering the vaccines, particularly given the large number of vaccines that need to be distributed and the limited number of trained healthcare professionals available to administer them. Since the Brexit vote, unemployment in the UK has increased. In the months following the vote, the unemployment rate rose from around 5% to over 8%, and it has remained at a similar level since then. It's important to note that unemployment has increased for a range of reasons, and it is not clear if this is directly related to Brexit. One factor that may have contributed to the increase in unemployment is the global economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has had a significant impact on the global economy, and many businesses have struggled as a result. In addition, the UK's departure from the EU has also created uncertainty for businesses, and this may have contributed to the increase in unemployment. In the midst of all this, the UK has also navigated its departure from the EU. While it's true that Brexit has created uncertainty for businesses and may have contributed to the economic challenges facing the UK, it is not clear if it has had a significant additional impact. It's important to note that the UK's economic challenges are likely to be the result of a range of factors, including the global economic downturn caused by the pandemic, as well as domestic economic policies and other structural issues. 
It remains to be seen how the UK's economy will recover from the impact of the pandemic and the Brexit decision, and what the long-term consequences of these events will be. Thanks for watching another episode of Europe Disaster. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth coverage of the latest European news and events. We'll see you in the next one.